Hi, my name is Mia Diala. Thanks for joining us for the 12 days of CHCA. Today I'm going to be making a Stollen wreath, a traditional German fruit bread that I have done for many years in my home. So the first part of the fruit bread is always marinating your fruits. Um, today we have uh, three kinds of fruits, raisins, cranberries, and uh, orange peel. Um, but you can also add slivered almonds and you basically put it in the bowl. And uh, the type of alcohol we are utilizing is a brandy and a rum. So I'm just gonna soak the fruits. That's the brandy. This is the rum. You wanna mix it just so that all of the dried fruit and the nuts get soaked. You wanna leave it at room temperature at least for 24 hours, but it's better that you do it at least three days. The flavor gets stronger as it sits because the fruit soaks up the alcohol. So the next thing we're gonna do is the sponge. The sponge only contains three ingredients. So this is a whole milk, the flour, and then the yeast. We're using a dry active yeast. You wanna put your yeast into your warmed up milk and we're gonna create a slurry. As long as it's getting foamy and bubbly, um, you know that your yeast is going to work in your dough. Uh, we're gonna just stir this a little bit before we add our flour. So we'll add our flour. You should mix it until it comes together. Once you have the dough come together, you wanna let it sit for about uh, 30 minutes in a dry and warm place. Uh, you want to cover it with plastic wrap and set it aside. So you can see I let this um, the sponge sit for about 30 minutes and it almost like quadrupled in size. So we're going to utilize that first into our bowl. The other ingredients that I have here, uh, this is whole wheat flour and bread flour, but also this is an enriched dough, so it contains butter, sugar, and eggs. Um, we also have uh, salt. Uh, this is a mixture of uh, spices, and usually um, I can get a stolen spice, but if you can't find stolen spices, um, it's a mixture of uh, cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, cardamom and mace. The two main ingredients for this spice mixture is the cardamom and the mace. And they are the very definitive flavor that comes out of a stolen. So if you make this um, at home, try and make sure that those two spices are the stronger spices in your mixture. Um, I also have um, lemon zest, but if you don't have lemon zest and carry extracts, Oils and extracts can replace the lemon and orange zest. So in our bowl, we're gonna add all our flour, our egg, our salt. Be careful though, um, with the cinnamon, you try not to put a heavy amount of cinnamon because cinnamon tends to kill yeast, and if it kills yeast, then your bread will become dense. So not too much cinnamon into your uh, bread. We're gonna put our zest. I like a very strong flavor, so I always put all of this in there too. We're gonna put our sugar and our butter. We're gonna set aside the fruits. So I'm gonna add my dough hook to my machine. Usually you want to go on a slow speed uh, in the beginning because what you're doing in the first uh, minute and a half, you're actually just hydrating your flour. So this is the point where you can check and see if the flour is has enough moisture and that the dough is not too dry. So we're gonna start at about, with the KitchenAids, it's about a two to four uh, speed. So just go for about a minute and a half at two to four. So I'm gonna stop it and just scrape the sides to make sure all my ingredients are incorporated in my dough. Okay. Once you're satisfied with the hydration of your dough, um, you can increase the speed to about four to six to continue the, the kneading process to develop your gluten. 
So uh, we've been mixing it for about five minutes. It could take up to about 10 minutes. So uh, to do your test, you want to stop uh, the dough and take uh, a piece of dough and just keep pulling it. If you pull it and not too aggressively, you're trying just to pull it slightly so that um, it stretches. And as long as it stretches without it breaking, which is what I'm getting right now, you are very good. It should be, you could see um, through this if you look at it on a, a piece of paper that has print on it. So we're gonna take our dough now and add our marinated fruits. This is just to incorporate it into our dough. So once the fruit has gone into your dough, you're gonna lightly dust your table with a little bit of flour. You don't wanna be excessive with your flour. The more flour that you incorporate into the dough, the dough tends to get a lot tougher. So once you turn out your dough, it is slightly wet and may not have all of your uh, fruit incorporated. You wanna slightly dust it and just knead it. Kneading is from the outside to the center and turn. If it is too wet, then just a little bit more just to prevent it from sticking. And I, all I'm doing is trying to create a skin on the top. The creation of the skin um, on the top helps to capture all the CO2 that the yeast is going to create. So once I have my dough rounded up, I'm gonna place it into a container. You wanna slightly grease your container with a little bit of oil, just so that it doesn't stick to the container itself. And you wanna make sure you have a cover so that there's no skin that is created. This is sitting at a room temperature. This can take up to two hours, depending on your environment. Uh, the cooler the environment, the longer this will take. Usually when I let it proof on its own, I like to do about two hours and then I'll get at least double its volume. And that's what you're looking for, a double volume with your dough. So now our dough has doubled in size. So you wanna lightly dust your table again, turn out your dough. You're gonna divide it into two because this recipe makes two portions of a wreath but you're gonna do one at a time. So let's put this one back in our container. And you wanna roll this out to uh, nine inches by 22 inches. Lightly dust the top. And when you're rolling it uh, into a rectangle, you wanna make sure that initially the shape is a rectangular, and then you do corner to corner so this corner to this corner, and then this corner to this corner, and then in between. And you just keep doing that until you get your length and your width. And that'll make sure that this keeps that rectangular shape. And this mat that I have is really great because you can uh, use it as a ruler to get your sizing. So I'm almost at nine. You can help uh, straighten out the edges with your scraper. Because when you roll it, you wanna make sure that the edges are all equal. So now uh, you want to brush this with your melted butter. And it's like making a cinnamon roll. And we're gonna start sprinkling our sugar mixture with the spices, and this is up to you how much you wanna put. Then you want to use a box grater with the biggest holes on it and grate some of your almond paste. Okay. And then you start rolling your dough up. So you start at one end and start folding in your dough. And then you continue the same process, ensuring that the dough is very tight. And just make sure that the dough is level on the ends. And then we're gonna cut it in half and twist it. So use a really sharp knife and go to the center and go right across. Until you reach the bottom.
Then you want to make an X with your two strands. Starting from the center and twisting it. And then at the end, I usually just pinch it and just, just to get it to seal. And then you do the top. Anything that falls out, just stick it back in. And then just twist it at the end just to get a tip. So you want to make sure that you have a parchment or a silk pan or a silk pad at the bottom just to be able to uh, remove and protect your dough. So I'm going to lift my dough and I'm going to form a circle and that's going to create your wreath. I'm going to cover this with saran wrap and let it proof for at least an hour until it doubles in size and then we're going to bake it in a 350 oven and it usually takes about 25 to 40 minutes. What you're doing to check it being done is taking your thermometer and taking the internal temperature and the internal temperature should be at least 190 Fahrenheit um, and that's how you know that the bread is completely cooked inside. So this is a done stolen wreath and as soon as it comes out of the oven what you want to do is take melted butter and brush it so that it soaks into the bread and basically what I'm dusting um, the stolen with is a mixture of half icing sugar and half uh, granulated sugar so we're gonna dust it and usually I do a initial dust and then one more just before you serve it. Now we're gonna cut it and so you can see this, the inside of the stolen. And you can see that it has a lot of fruit inside and the pieces of almond paste throughout the whole thing. So this is my Stolen wreath. I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys have a happy holidays.